I was asked to build a Curly Maple audio rack for a serious audio file. I gave him two choices for legs. He chose the first one. And this is what it looks like. I bought the Curly Maple from CurlyMapleWood.com where I buy all of my Curly Maple. This is the Northern Hard Rock Maple for the middle and bottom shelf. This is all of the wood, including the Purple Heart. And the Curly Maple just looks gorgeous. When I tried to join it on a straight knife joiner, this is the way it came out. So I ordered a Shelix helical cutter head, and that took three months to come in. Results from the Shelix cutter head were just fantastic. I planed the hard rock maple and I lightly skipped plane the curly maple. Fortunately there was no chipping. As you can imagine there was a lot of edge joining. A lot of ripping to width. The nitrile gloves help me to grip the wood because it's so slick and the edges are sharp. Biscuits. These don't really help with strength, but they do help with alignment. We cleaned up one side to make sure that it was coplanar with the other side before gluing up the third piece on this curly maple shell. And we did the same thing with the hard rock maple. cut a strip off to go on the front edge of the middle and bottom shell so that it would look like curly maple. And of course, like everything else, those ran through the drum sander. I run almost everything through the drum sander. Probably one of the most used tools in my shop. To 
trimmed a little bit of the width off the curly maple front edge for the middle and bottom shelves. preparing everything to glue up. This is the curly maple top shelf. This is gluing the curly maple face on the middle or bottom shelf. I thought it looked pretty cool to see the chips flying off of the flush trim bit. So this is really more for entertainment than anything else. And a little bit of slow motion also. I had to buy this circular saw just for this job. My 50-year-old circular saw wouldn't cut this. The blade was too wobbly and it was not precise enough. So for this job, I had to buy the circular saw and the Shelix cutter head. But I get to use them from now on, so it was a good purchase. And any project that requires the purchase of a new tool is a good project. I cut the purple heart legs to the approximate length. Ran them across the jointer so that I could follow up on the planer. Purple Heart machines quite well. There's a lot of walking when I use the planer under the table saw extension but it's good exercise. And of course, those ran through the drum sander as well. Trimming the legs to the proper length.
Purple Heart looks really good when it's sanded on the end grain. And I guess I need to lubricate my saw. I cut a chamfer so the legs would not splinter. everything for the CNC so I could lay out the marks. Making sure the leg is straight with the axis. The holes drilled nicely. They machined quite well. Very clean. This is a quarter inch down cut spiral running at 18,000 RPM and 175 inches per minute. I used a chamfer bit on each hole so that meant a bit change on each leg. This is an oversight on my part. It's been a while since I've worked with Purple Heart and I forgot that it splinters out pretty easily. This looks really bad, but it was fairly easy to fix. For all of the subsequent legs, I used Baltic birch to keep the edges from splintering out. I also changed the cutting profile. I needed a way to hold the legs vertical on the drill press, so I made this little fixture. This is for drilling the pockets or the adjustable feet.
using a quarter round bit. sanding. This is 120 grit. Placing the legs and marking for the holes so I can drill for the threaded inserts. It was pretty easy to drill into the end grain with a pilot bit and then a forstner bit followed up by a twist drill to get the right size for the threaded insert. I tried about five different ways to put the threaded inserts in and finally settled on an air impact wrench. I have a half inch Ingersoll Rand and that was really the only way I could get those in. We trial fitted everything together and this let me know where I needed to make adjustments and also to mark the middle and bottom shelves for the holes for the back leg. I couldn't find washers the size I needed. So I bought the closest I could and turned them down on the sander. This is spraying the first coat of lacquer. Nope, this is spraying the first coat of sealer. and sanding with 220 grit about an hour later. And this is the first coat of lacquer.
This is the first coat of sealer on the shelves. to spray both sides and not damage the side that I had just sprayed. So I came up with these little fixtures and it worked pretty good. It allowed me to spray and sand one side and then flip it over and not rest it on the side I had just worked on. And this is a very heavy coat of lacquer. One more time to see these little fixtures at work. Like I said, a really heavy coat. And if you've never sprayed lacquer, it flashes off pretty quickly. So really this was not long. And that's the finished legs. And these are the finished shells. I let them all dry for about a week before delivering. And I said he was a serious audiophile. He's got some really nice equipment. This is the best sounding system I have ever heard. And this curly maple is just simply gorgeous. And one more look at the curly maple. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe, turn on notifications. I believe I'm going to start doing videos again. I just hope I get my voice back. <laughs> Thanks.